We're learning that uh, John Bolton didn't uh, just lead the White House. He was essentially fired. A tweet from the president, I informed John Bolton last night that his services are no longer needed at the White House. I disagreed strongly with many of his suggestions, as did others in the administration, and therefore I asked John for his resignation, which was given to me this morning. I thank John very much for his service. I will be naming an, <coughs> excuse me, a new national security advisor next week. What do you mean? Well, look, on the deal with the Taliban in Afghanistan, John Bolton was an adamant opponent of bringing the Taliban, the Afghan government, to Camp David to continue negotiating. He was against the deal with the Taliban entirely. So if you go against the president's policies, he also had been an advocate in the past of uh, a direct strike and regime change in Iran. But so the president did end up because of this attack that killed a U.S. serviceman shelving the talks anyway. Right, but he didn't change his policy. Got it. He wants to remove troops. John Bolton was for a much more limited drawdown of the troops. I think this makes sense from a policy point of view. If the national security advisor and the president are going in different directions, Neil. One of them has to go, and the president only goes after an election. Well, but I do think that, um, you know, I think that the American people are immune to the revolving door in the White House. I agree with that, I, you know, yeah. I, I will say that, you know, normally this would be an unbelievable big breaking news flash, but because we have so, so many people either getting fired are choosing to leave. It's been a non-stop revolving door. So that one advantage to the White House is that we're pretty much uh, immune to uh, the, the the breaking news signal of somebody leaving the White House. And he was sort of on the outs prior, yeah. right? Oh, yes. Right. Um, Blake Berman at the White House. You have more on this, Blake? Here's what's so unusual about this one. I know, um, as your guest just said, Neil, we're kind of numb to these things around here uh, because this happens within this administration at a fairly uh, normal pace at this point, I guess you could say. John Bolton was scheduled to be inside the Brady briefing room in about uh, an hour and a half's time, along with the Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin the Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, the White House put out that updated bulletin about uh, 30, 40 minutes ago. Yet we learned from the president that last night he had asked for John Bolton's resignation, that it was delivered to the president this morning, and John Bolton, if he's not left the White House already, uh, is in the process of doing so. So clearly, Neil, there was some sort of... Um, Someone didn't get the message because the White House had told us about a, a half an hour ago, 45 minutes ago, that John Bolton would be inside this building uh, briefing the media alongside Steve Mnuchin and the Treasury Secretary and the uh, Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo. Uh, one other thing, Neil, the president often says how he likes different voices in the room. Um, I, I just jumped in, so maybe you covered this, and apologies if you did. Uh, but John Bolton was very clearly a different voice in the room. Oftentimes, the president holds that up as a good thing. In this case, he is holding it up as something that necessarily wasn't warranted and needed change. Neil? Yeah, normally, Blake, to your point, uh, someone submits their resignation, and that's the end. You, you, you hear later on about the, you know, the theater and what was going on behind the scenes. In this case, the president himself saying, as, uh, as you reported, that uh, I informed John Bolton that his services are no, no longer needed at the White House, as if to make the point emphatically clear it was coming from him. So right. I'm, I'm beginning to wonder for the, whether for the, something... for the person who's known it. Right, yeah, for right. the person who's known as saying you're fired, uh, that's another way of saying you're fired. Yeah, but apparently not to the degree that. He, this was even passed along to the authorities that made this planned event later on today, right? Yeah, I mean, let me um, <laughs> I go through my phone if, if I have a, a second here. But, you know, the White House put out this briefing. Um, gosh, what time was it? At any event, um, within the last hour or so. And, um, yeah, at around what time, Ralph? Uh, at around 10.50 or so, so about an hour ago. Um, and now we are learning very clearly that John Bolton will not be at that briefing. 
All right. Um, or at least we don't anticipate. <laughs> got it. But well, that'd be something yeah. if no one got the word to John Bolton. He shows up. What are you guys looking at? <laughs> All right. Thank you, my friend. Very, very much, you Mike it. Berman. Um, you know, Noel, when I see this and you talked about t turnover at the White House, mm -hmm. it's, it's been particularly pronounced. Uh, you know, Jim Mattis was getting into that with me, but said that, you know, presidents are free to, to pick and choose who they want around them. This one just goes through more than most. But what are we to glean from that? Well, I think what, uh, you know, <laughs> What you're to take from that is <clears throat> this is how Trump is is doing business. This is not. I don't think it's very normal um, that um, you know past presidents have had this much of a turnover in this many positions. Also, there are some positions, from what I've heard, that are still not not full, being filled. So he's got you know some open open spots still, and then in some of the key positions, think about how many. Uh, positions, um, White House communications, White House press secretaries, uh, defense. Think about how many times that has turned. But over. I would flip it around. I would look at that and say, when you have an absentee landlords in all these apartments and all, the economy is doing very well. To your point, Charles, life is going on. Uh, you know, you don't want to minimize the significance of a national security advisor stepping down on the heels of so many other key right. players right. in and outside the cabinet doing the same. But if it's hurting us economically or hurting us on, 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 the, on the global sea, or maybe it's the perception becomes a reality, but it hasn't shown it. No, it hasn't shown it. And I, I'm just not sure why anybody is surprised by the same person who had three campaign managers during the election, right? So, I mean, this is not, I mean, he had a show, to Blake's point, where the tagline was, you're fired. President Trump comes out. But this he's Trump rarely done it himself, right? Uh, you know, it's, the point know. is, it's, it doesn't happen without him, right? So right. I think the most important thing here is, uh, you but know. But I remember Rex Tillers in the former secretary. He was, he found out about it later on, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jim Mattis found out about that this week. The president thinks it's a good idea. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, there's channels sometimes, but ultimately he's making these decisions. And a lot of people said, you know, we want a business person, uh, right. someone who. If you're, for instance, a publicly traded company, you have a report card every three months. You're right. You have to make decisions really quickly. And if something is not working, you have to act very quickly. And this is something that President Trump brings to the job that no other president has, in part because he has a completely different background. And, of course, we know he has a different temperament. Yeah. And you endorse ruthlessness. <laughs> <laughs> what there, there is one other thing here which I think is worth saying. When you're trying to make foreign policy on a global basis, not only Afghanistan, as I said, but Iran, Iraq, uh, the Middle East peace process, North Korea. And you have a national security advisor as respected and high profile as John Bolton, who is being reported to publicly disagree on many of those policy decisions the president is making. It becomes untenable. You just can't stop. Well, with all due respect, can I say one thing, though? Please. The, these players around the world did not like John Bolton. These, right. Our European That's true, too. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, That's the true. fact of the matter is almost anyone who's been critical of Trump's foreign policy have been, they've zeroed in on the warmonger himself, well, John sure. Bolton. I'm sure and then no matter what the president does on this front, he, he can't win. I mean, the, the, the press and many are not fans of John Bolton, not right. fans of this right. sort of in-your-face military style, you know, uh, and, and this is going to be greeted to, to, I think, what you had touched on, you know, instability of the White House, but it would be instability, I think, that a lot of the zealots, uh, you know, might, might, might scratch their heads and say, all right, this isn't good, when in fact, if it's going the Jim Mattis way, where he's going to be, you know, not rushed to judgment on keeping troops in Syria or not getting rid of them all right away, that this could be part of a process that would be deemed favorable. Well, Neil, you can look at it two ways. If you don't like Trump, you can look at the revolving door in the White House as he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't have a grip, he doesn't know what he's doing, or you can look at it like Charles does and you can say, wow, you know, he, if something doesn't work, he's quick, he doesn't, he doesn't let it uh, sit there and stew, he gets rid of it and he goes on to the next one. So it depends. If you're a fan of well, Trump, he wasn't you think quick this is on beautiful. This. I mean, this is no, a couple of years. We'll right? probably right. find out in John Bolton's book. I'm sure has John Bolton will do a book. Fan. I just, I think that's President Trump's modus operandi yeah. as, a, as a private citizen and as a president. Well, you I know, I guess what I was trying to get at there, guys, and I don't know if you agree with this, uh, there's a lot of criticism that is shoot from the hip policies in the Middle East, and then um, it, it cut both ways, and, and Bolton sort of embodied that. And along he comes to say, all right, well, maybe I'm going to analyze this a little bit more. The, the, the yeah. Syrian Look. pullout that he, that he shelved when... It was raised in March. This is going to be potentially unsettling to the entire Middle East 
So he shelved it. So maybe this is a step in a direction that people who are in the military might welcome. I think they would. Certainly those who are more judicious, less willing to use force will. Also, going into a re-election mode to have a national security advisor out of sync with the president, where both what Charles said is correct, too. Our allies don't like him, but also it sends mixed that messages. That used to be a badge of honor, though, to this president. Right? It, it may well have been that was then, this is now. Right. And the president wants peace and prosperity in uh, an election year, not conflict around the world. But back when we were negotiating with China, I think a lot of people, he did that as a, a message to China that they should be fearing Bolton. What do you mean by that? Like, well, I mean, when we were talking about, you know, the trade negotiations and, and sticking things to China, I think, oh, you know, I see, I see what you're I think saying. that that was a very strategic move back then. All right. Uh, well, John Bolton has uh, written back, tweeted back. I guess they <laughs> Anyway, he said, I offered to resign last night, and President Trump said, let's talk about it tomorrow. Now, the president said this was decided last night. He's more or less going out saying, all right, I offered to resign. He said, we'll talk about it tomorrow. We're not quite sure, uh, skinny here. What we can say is, is Bolton is out anyway. Um, don't let the screen door hit you on the way out. <laughs>